So Samsung has just released two new watches, the Watch 7 and the Ultra. And one of the things that they're telling us that they like to help us with is managing our metabolic health. And the way they'd like to do that is by keeping track of our advanced glycation end products, AGEs for short, in an index that the watch is going to calculate for us and display. And so that obviously raises a number of interesting questions, starting with what are AGEs and what do they do in our bodies, if anything? Are they good? Are they bad? Do we need to do something about them? And do we really need a smartwatch to keep track of them and let us know what they are? And that's what this video is about. So hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well, are happy and healthy, and are getting out there to exercise. So before we dive in, I have no association or affiliations with Samsung. I'm doing this out of my own volition, on my own expense, and on my own time. And so enjoy. And so what are AGEs? Well, AGEs are a family of chemicals. Uh, they are creating using a number of uh, complex chemical processes that we don't need to go into here. But what, what they have in common is that AGEs are formed when proteins or lipids, fats, or nucleic acid combine with sugars, glucose, fructose, and, and that like. And the process happens in one of two different ways. It can be endogenous to our bodies, which means that it obviously happens inside our bodies, or it can be exogenous through cooking and food processing and food manufacture, since we do live in the industrial food era, and are then introduced into our bodies when we eat and drink. <coughs> Excuse me. And so starting with the endogenously produced AGEs, it's a perfectly natural and in fact necessary process. Uh, proteins get glaciated during the sugar metabolism process, for instance, which we need to produce energy. The proteins can also get uh, glaciated when uh, Old proteins in our bodies are replaced by new proteins, which once again is a perfectly natural process of uh, cell replacements that happens in our body on a continuous basis and should be. It would be a bad thing if it wasn't. And so unless you have a major disease like, say, diabetes or, or some other things like that, the level of AGEs in your body produced by the body itself should be perfectly normal and should not be you know cause of any concern or worry nor should there be a need for you to quite frankly keep track of it right <coughs> excuse me and so that brings us to the externally produced, the exogenous AGEs that are then introduced into our bodies. And, you know, once again, if we talk about proteins, if we talk about fats, if we talk about sugars, especially if they're cooked under high temperatures with low levels of moisture, those are going to have high levels of AGEs. So think uh, fried chicken. Frying is really bad when it comes to producing AGEs. It produces a lot of them. So fried chicken, french fries, grilling, so grilled steak, but also ice cream, sodas, alcohol. Alcohol is a major, major accelerant of glycation. All of those things are bad. You know, general industrial production of foods which uses high pressure, high temperature, and that like, is going to produce foods that are high in AGEs. And so when we 
consume them, it's obviously going to bring it into our bodies. What are foods that are low in AGEs? Well, you've probably guessed it, right? Uh, raw fruits and <laughs> vegetables <laughs> are good for you. They are low in AGEs, <laughs> berries, green tea, uh, and, and that like. And so eating those might actually reduce your uh, sort of AGE concentration. So after you've had your french fries, uh, drink some green tea, for instance. Eat some vitamin, vitamin C or vitamin E and that like. <clears throat> But on a serious note, it, it, it actually falls into these categories. And so it should be pretty straightforward. And, you know, if you're wondering about any particular food or any particular food preparation, you can look it up. Proteins obviously aren't bad. We need proteins. But it's a question of cooking. Uh, proteins have much lower AGE levels if they are slow cooked on lower temperatures in moisture. And so bake the chicken in in your oven rather than frying it. Bake potatoes rather than making french fries. If you're going to eat eggs, boil them. Once again, don't fry them and that like. So hopefully relatively straightforward. Now, why is that important? Are AGEs bad for us? Yes. In <clears throat> above normal levels, in terms of AGE concentration, AGEs are actually bad for us. They are associated and probably cause, or at least contribute to causing, every disease known to man. Inflammation, cancers, bad skin, um, there is uh, associations with Parkinson, Alzheimer's, <coughs> each and every chronic disease. So there is certainly nothing good about having high levels of AGEs in our bodies. Uh, AGEs are also associated with physiological aging of our bodies, physiological. And so, once again, nothing good about that and uh, that's why nutrition and exercise are important, right? Now there's one thing that more thing that we need to talk about before we start talking to the about the AGE index and the watch. So just like we can characterize AGEs as exogenous or endogenous, we can also correct, characterize them as fluorescent and non-fluorescent. And the importance of that in this context, obviously, is that if we try to detect them by shining light into our bodies and uh, capturing them in the ISF, in the interstitial fluid, which is obviously what a watch is going to do, then we're only going to see the fluorescent ones, which are going to absorb certain wavelengths of lights and reflect the ones that they don't absorb we are not going to capture the non-fluorescent ones. And that obviously raises two important questions. Excuse me. The first one is, <clears throat> if we can only capture the fluorescent ones and not the non-fluorescent ones, is that good enough? Are the fluorescent AGEs representative, if you want, of the concentration of AGEs in our bodies? And in principle, the answer is yes. However, it raises an important question with regards to the Samsung watches or any other devices that try to capture and measure fluorescent AGEs. And that is, how many of the fluorescent AGEs is Samsung going to capture and measure? And the answer is that I don't know. I've looked for that information. I haven't found it. I don't know if it's because Samsung hasn't released it yet or because I'm a klutz and can't find information that's out there, but I don't know. And so that's one of the questions that I have. How many and which fluorescent AGEs does the watch capture and measure? And uh, therefore, how many and which ones are included in the index that uh, Samsung will be releasing. So with that, we can finally get to the watch. And uh, first of all, 
kudos to Samsung. I think they've done something that is very useful and very important. And that is that uh, Watch 7 and the Samsung Ultra have LEDs for six different wavelengths of light. Those of you who have sport watches will know that your sport watch has either one or two different colored LEDs. It has either a red light or a green light or maybe both. But obviously red and green doesn't cover the entire visible spectrum. What the Samsung watches do now is that they do because they have five LEDs for visible light and then they have one LED set for the ultraviolet light. And that is a very, very important innovation that is quite frankly long overdue. I don't understand why nobody else has done it. I know that Rockley was trying to do it in their chip. Now it's an important topic so I'm going to cover it in an entirely different video and uh, those of you who subscribe will obviously be notified of it. Those of you who don't, well, you may want to consider subscribing so you'll find out when it releases. Hopefully you're interested in that. But that's a subject for a different video because I think it's an important topic and a topic that's going to take a few minutes to talk about. <clears throat> so kudos to Samsung for doing this. It's an important innovation. Now, is this AGE index going to be useful and meaningful? And my answer to that question in this specific case is yes and no. And I'm actually going to start with the no. And the reason for that is that I think, based on what we've talked about and how important the role of nutrition is here, uh, the simple fact of the matter is if we think about what we eat and whether and how much we exercise, we should be able to make a pretty darn good educated guess as to what our level of AGEs is without needing a device for it. I mean, for most of us who eat a normal, relatively healthy diet, it's probably going to be somewhere in the middle. People who eat a bad diet, the things that we've talked about, french fries, fried chicken, fried eggs and whatnot, little fruits and vegetables, it's probably going to be high, and it should be, and you shouldn't be surprised by that. Uh, and for the saints among us who live off raw fruits and vegetables, raw nuts, not roasted nuts, because roasting is very bad for nuts, and drink a lot of green tea and don't drink sodas and don't drink alcohols, well, your AGE concentration in your blood is going to be low, and that's just the way it should be. And uh, it's simply a very long-winded way, I guess, of saying that you should not need a watch to know about this. Just think about what you eat, be honest with yourself, how much you eat of what, how much you drink of what, and that should give you a pretty good idea of what's going on. The other reason that I don't necessarily think it's uh, that terribly useful right now is that, as we all appreciate, our bodies are pretty complex biological uh, machines and having information on a limited set of uh, metabolites and a limited set of uh, vital signs is not that useful and so we need a critical mass of those and hopefully that's where Samsung is going but they clearly haven't gotten there yet nor has anyone else so we shall we shall see now, what about the yes part? Why am I not giving you a categorical no? Well, I appreciate that not everybody pays uh, close attention to their nutrition and their exercise, so I can see that there could be value of people being alerted to it as in, hey, you should actually be paying attention to that because your AGEs are going through the roof, and that may not be good for you. But I do think that that presupposes one thing, and that is that Samsung, in addition to sort of giving people this index and telling us what our AGE levels are, also provides some useful guidance, such as asking people what they eat or if they eat specific things that might be elevating their AGEs, or suggesting that if they're not eating a lot of fruit, they may want to eat a little bit more fruit. So in other words, 
like any other measure, it has to be put in context. I just don't think that giving someone the measure by itself is necessarily going to be enough for people who need the alert because they're not paying attention to it and may not be as knowledgeable about this as they need to be. The other aspect to that is, of course, we could have a long conversation about the socioeconomics of uh, nutrition and sport watch ownership. And I don't necessarily think that they necessarily align in a way that is going to be helpful to people who truly need the help. Uh, I think we all appreciate that smart watches are probably more likely to be owned by the worried well than by people who uh, have to compromise on their nutrition. So <clears throat> for whatever that's worth. Uh, so in conclusion, what do I think about this? Well, once again, I think it's an excellent innovation of Samsung to have now six different uh, wavelengths of LEDs because that will enable them to capture more metabolites and more vital signs, I hope. Assuming, of course, their hardware is accurate and they add software to it with algorithms for other things. And we'll talk about more about that in the other video that will drop in a few days. Would I go out and buy the Samsung watch simply because it's now going to tell me about uh, the AGE levels? And by the way, they haven't released that feature yet. I think it's going to come a little bit later, but I'm not clear exactly about when. Uh, no, because I think uh, you need a critical mass of uh, metabolites and a critical mass of vital signs to, to manage your health. And just having this isn't compelling enough for me, though I hope this is just a starting point. <clears throat> and, you know, once again, as I mentioned, you can take a pretty educated guess as sort of what your levels are if you're honest with yourself and actually think about the things that you eat and the things that you drink. And, you know, you can just make the adjustments that you may choose to make without having a watch tell you to do that. So, hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, give me your feedback. Uh, subscribe if you're interested in future videos. And, uh, yeah, take good care of yourselves. Be well. Thanks for watching, and be well. Bye-bye.